Today is the 10th of February and I've been doing quite a few videos. We spent the day at Wisley checking over our trees at Wisley and I've come back to the nursery and it's in the afternoon. A lovely partly sunny day and the temperature is quite mild. It's 8 or 9 degrees centigrade and it's perfect. None of the soil is frozen. So what I'm going to do today is to show you how we repot but more importantly to show you how to check that a tree needs repotting. So often I come across people who insist on repotting their trees every year. I can tell you straight away that most bonsai don't need repotting every year. Not even every other year. If you live in the tropics, some of the ficuses may need doing every other year, but I don't think as a rule they need doing every other year even. So let me begin to show you um, the various points to bear in mind when you are repotting. First of all, it's the timing. The timing, of course, in the south of England, we have two months when we repot. February, if it's mild like this, and March. By the end of March, it's getting a bit late to repot. So the calendar is a good indication of the repotting season. So repotting season is February and March in the UK. That means in a mild temperate climate. And then the other thing is to watch the development of the growth on the twigs, which gives a good indication. If I take you into the back greenhouse, I will show you some of our so-called indoor trees. We have some Chinese elms, although we sell them as indoor trees. They're strictly outdoor trees. And if you come in here, I will show you exactly what I mean. Now in this greenhouse, the trees are kept at a very low temperature. This greenhouse goes to zero degrees. It freezes in the winter for a cold night, but it is always about two, perhaps two degrees warmer than it is outside. Now let me show you these Chinese elms. So the Chinese elms, we let it freeze. So when you let it get cold, you get the yellowing of the leaves and the leaves will drop off. So if you get this dropping of the leaves, don't panic. But what you need to look for are the signs of new growth. I don't know whether the camera can pick it up. You see all these little buds. If you look at all the trees, you can see all these new buds coming out, which is quite clear for you to see. And this is the sign of spring. These will all develop into new leaves in a couple of weeks time. So when the trees are beginning to show bud like this, this is the ideal time, absolute ideal time to, to do repotting. But just because they're coming into leaf, it doesn't mean you need to repot. What you need to look for is to examine each bonsai to see how pot-bound the roots are. Now let's have a look at each of these trees. I'm not cheating, I haven't looked at any of these trees and I will tell you what in my view, uh, whether the tree needs repotting or not. You see how soft the soil is? That is by no means pot-bound. I know the roots, one or two roots are at the edges, but there is so much room for the tree to grow. So that doesn't need repotting. Let's have a look at many of these. Now, even this one, you look at it closely. There's a root that has come right up to the side. Some people may say that it needs repotting. You can tease it out by all means. But again, it is fairly soft. So in a situation like this, I wouldn't rush out to repot this tree. You can repot it and put it in a bigger pot if you want to make it grow bigger, but this tree certainly does not need to be repotted. If we look at each of these trees in turn, look at this one. Again, the roots have gone right to the side, but again, it is so soft inside. So there's a lot of room still for the roots to develop. So this doesn't need repotting. At this rate, I'll be hard pressed to find any tree that does need repotting. Okay, look at this one. The roots are filling the pot there, filling the pot there. That is getting close to repotting. Okay, this might need it, but you see it is soft over there. So if it's soft there, there's still room for it to go there. So again, I wouldn't rush to repot the tree. You could do it, but you don't have to do it. So 
I don't know whether I'm confusing you or not. Let's look at some of the uh, ficuses to see whether any of the ficuses need doing or not. Now, I know that some of these ficuses have been here for a long time. So let's look at this one. The pot is pretty small and ficuses grow. But again, you see, it's not pot bound, not pot bound. So no. there's a lot of room for it to grow. So it seems that most of our so-called indoor plants, see again, a lot of room for it to grow. So that's why I always am perplexed when people feel that they have to repot a tree as soon as they buy it. I can't understand the logic for it because none of these trees really need to be repotted. So it's only when it goes round and round and the pot is completely jammed with roots. Look at this one. There is so much soil there. It's absolutely soft. So that sort of situation means no need to repot. I think the best examples will be our outdoor trees, but most of these, I'm uh, sad to say, I can't show you examples of repotting here because none of these trees in this greenhouse need repotting. Now let's see outside where we can possibly find one or two trees that look as if they need repotting. Okay, perhaps let's look at these big Korean hornbeams. Now, these big Korean hornbeams, let's look at this one. So, we'll go through the procedure. I've got Steve, my main man here, and if you come close, Joe, you'll we'll see what we do. The trees, of course, have been tied in with wire from the last repot. So, once the roots have filled the pot, the wire doesn't need to be there. So, I don't need to tie it back again. So we remove the wires and prise it out of the pot to examine the root ball. This I think was done maybe two or three years ago. Let's have a look. This is how we check. Now again, I don't think it is pot bound. This in my view, you see, it's still got room for it to grow. We could do it if we wanted to, especially if sometimes you get rotten roots if the soil is too wet, it can rot the roots. Let's tilt it this way, Steve. Let's look completely on the underside. Tilt it up this way. Okay, now if you can bring the camera close. It's wet. I might do a repot, but again, it doesn't really need it. You see, in this sort of situation. It's not desperate. Yeah, it's not desperate for repotting. You can sometimes get roots at the edges which rot and turn black, but you will soon get the new roots again. So, I might do this one just to show you as an example, but again, this doesn't really need it. Let's find one that obviously needs. Keep it like that, we'll show it. The other little trick I need to show you is that before you repot, if you want to drain the pot and let the soil drain out, we put it at a tilt like this and the water will drain out more easily. So that's a little trick to remember. You know, if you keep it like this, let the water drain, and then it become drier and much easier to repot. Now this tree looks pretty pot bound. Now let's have a look at it. Perhaps Steve can show you what's happening here. It hasn't been tied, so I think we took the wires off maybe a couple of years ago. Let's see what is going on here. It's one of our beaches that we developed on the nursery and look at it it is so vigorous that the roots are coming out of the pot okay so I can't even get out of the pot so I'll have to cut that root off okay so we'll cut it off either with secateurs or a root cutter just to get it out of the pot so that looks as if it is pretty pot bound these are Mostly mica pots because I love using mica pots. If a customer wants a very good quality ceramic pot, we have them. But these mica pots, you couldn't even guess that they're not mica. They they look ceramic to me. But so you can get situations where the root is coming out of the pot. So judging from this, I can tell that it is 
going to be pretty pod on. So this is a good example. You be careful with a bit of wire stay. Yeah. The tool Steve is using is called a root cutter. So the root cutter looks like the branch splitter, but it's got wider jaws. And it's an ideal uh, tool for cutting the roots. Mm. And it's called a root cutter, not for uh, no reason. I think you may have to cut a little more. It's covering the holes too. You get this sort of situation with uh, flower pots as well. Let me cut that thing off and see. I think that's the wire holding the mesh. Yes, the mesh. Yes, it just holds the mesh. Okay, now we'll try and yank it out of the pot. I hate to use that term yank, but this is exactly what we're going to do. I don't think it'll come easy. May need a tool of some sort. Okay. All right. Okay. Now that is seriously pot bound. Look at the roots on the side. This is seriously pot bound. So this is a good example of a pot bound tree, and this certainly needs repotting. We will go through the procedure of doing this to show you exactly what we do. Okay, let's look at another one. So when we look at trees that you think need repotting, this is what you've got to do with each one. You've got to literally look at each tree, study the tree, and see whether they need it or not. If they don't need it, leave well alone. Because many of these trees are still in the process of being trained. Let's look at some of the trees here. Let's look at one of these larches. Now this larch I know hasn't been done for a while. Let's have a look at this. I don't think it's time we will examine this because ceramic pots, you've got to watch it. Okay. That's tidy. Tidy? Yeah. Mind when you lane, Steve. Okay, now we'll take it out of the pot. Check on the neighbors. Another one. Tilted this way. You just in the room. No, that's still in the room. Still in the room. Now you can. I will move. I'll cut through. Now this I would say probably needs it. We can give it more room to grow. All the roots have come to the edge. So this probably needs it. So I don't know whether I've shown you enough examples. Uh, maybe let's, there's one maple there. Come, we'll leave that tree there. We'll go to another maple, which I know 
Could be fucked on, but it's done They need a very serious looking tool. This is a multi trunk tree. I find that deciduous trees tend to grow stronger than uh, evergreen trees. I know the roots have gone wrong and around. We've got to deal with the nebari as well. So let's have a look at this tree to see if it needs repotting. Then the first thing we do is to check whether the tree is tied in. Come the side. No. Not tied in, okay. Okay, let's hold it now. Hold it side. Come have a look. Uh, you see the roots all at the side. It is pretty stiff. It is pretty stiff. And I think the trick is if you can get it out of pot steel for me, can you tilt it like that on the other side so I can see the water coming out? See, we usually do this before repotting. We put the tree like this to drain the soil. Although we haven't had rain, we had rain, a little bit of rain the other day. So this root ball is pretty wet. But if we leave this here for a couple of minutes, you will see how the water will drain out from this uh, root ball. So remember, this is a very good trick to remember. So before you repot a tree, lie it on the side, either in the pot or out of the pot and let it dry out a little bit. So this is the preliminary work we do with most trees. So this is a situation where it needs repotting. Some of the other trees, let's look at this one to see if that needs it. This probably not, but we'll have a look. I think we put it in that pot. Let's put it in a new pot. Now, with pines and beech trees, more pines than beech, let me remind you again till I'm blue in the face that white stuff is not root aphis or disease, it is the beneficial fungus called mycelium. So all pines have that. So again, although the roots have gone round and round, I don't really need to repot it. See, that's not pot bound by any means. I've had pines which are more pot bound than this. So this one I think could stay for another year. I wouldn't rush to do it. So I hope this is not confusing you, but judging whether a tree needs repotting or not is critical to any operation uh, for repotting now it's only like a couple of minutes so can you come here close and see how the water has already started draining from that root ball you see the water is literally flowing out from there so tilting the tree like this is a very good tip to remember it's literally flowing out from there so we will leave this for about half an hour or so before we even tackle the roots maybe even leave it for a day and we will just as an exercise go through one of those trees to show you the full process so here we are we are ready to repot this tree so let's take you through the procedure this is a very high grade tokoname pot from Japan and we'll put it back in the same pot so this is a European no I think this is a Japanese larch Japanese larch that we grew in our field back in 1985-86 and it was two or three times as tall as this so we chopped it over there grew a side branch and this is the design of the tree so here you are this tree has been in training for the last 30 or so years and we repot it every so often so we will tease away at the roots to see uh, what is in there and to show you 
how much wood to cut. Okay, far away, Steve. Now, these are big trees. I know most of you do not have trees as large as this, but the principles, nevertheless, are still the same. So just to recap for those of you who are new to bonsai, why do we repot bonsai? Bonsais are always grown in pots. The very term bonsai means tree in a pot, pun choi, or potted trees. And because they're grown in pots, the roots will completely fill the pot in time. And if you leave it indefinitely in the pot, the roots will strangle itself. So for that reason, we have to repot the tree. Many people imagine that repotting or cutting the roots, as they call it, although we do cut roots, that's not the right term. It's repotting rather than root cutting. It doesn't dwarf the tree as such. In fact, it makes the bonsai more vigorous because we are giving it more room to grow. So they all a purpose, the sole purpose of repotting really is to give the soil uh, a chance to be changed and we give more room for the tree to grow. And by giving more room, the tree gets more vigorous. So we're not really dwarfing or stunting it by keeping it pot bound. In fact, if you keep it pot bound, it will lose vigor and in time if you lose vigor too much the tree can eventually die but it will be a very long time before you do that so this tree i reckon would have been in this pot maybe four or five years and as i said it doesn't really need to be pot bound it is not so pot bound but i'm just taking the opportunity to do it again it certainly isn't pot bound. We've seen worse trees than this when it comes to repotting situations. And you notice that the root hook we are using for large trees, the root hook is a very useful tool to use. You get these single root hook, double root hook. So we begin by teasing the perimeter and then we will look at the underside as well. So you notice what Steve is doing here, he's combing the top because we want to show the surface roots. We always talk about nebari and all that, nebari simply means the surface roots. So that these lovely surface roots we want to develop. So the more you can show the surface roots the more impressive the tree will be because it gives a feeling that the tree is anchored into the soil. See, the more you tease away, you see some more root. And that is what you want to expose over time. So when it comes to repotting, this is a very good opportunity to see how you can improve the root base. And if roots are in the wrong position, they can be cut off or disposed of. See, the root spread is very important. Some of these large bonsai, if it's a very large tree, it can take as long as a day to do it. Not only are they heavy to handle and difficult to handle, there's a lot of work involved. Now this is the front of the tree. I think that root should be taken off, it's doing nothing, it's crossing there, so we'll cut it off over there, get rid of it. Okay, that 
doesn't do anything. The others are okay. Even this, I think, could be... I know there's a lot of root from there, but coming back like that doesn't look so good. Mm. Is there much root attached to this? Here's the root hook. Probably. If there isn't, I'd like to get rid of that. Get near the root. It's not really radial. You see, the radial part is this part. That part is going radial. This is crossing a bit. Can you hold the camera? I'll just see what there is. Because if there isn't, then I can safely take this off. You usually judge, if the tree has a lot of root, then you can judge whether it's safe to remove. Now, there's enough root there, so I think I can get, this is not doing much. It's coming back on itself. So let me just stay there. I'll bring a big rock and take that off. serious looking tool and what I'm going to do is take this bit off This is a good example because you should always take the opportunity to improve the nebari when you're repotting. So we can always improve it further, paring it down. Sometimes you can use a router for the very thick roots because with the thick root you can carve a channel in the middle. So one thick root can look much thinner and it look like two thin roots. I've done that to many of my very big maples that have massive roots. So you can bear that in mind as well. So now with this as the front, the roots are going that way and going that way rather than coming back on itself. And if you want to develop more surface roots, you can always put like sphagnum mosses like doing an air layering, put around here and you can develop more roots. So the rest of the roots are not too bad, that's nice radial. And then we look underneath the tree to see what needs doing. So we just tease that gently and we will put it back in the pot. We're now threading wire through the pots. These are the tying wires. So for a large tree like this, we're using two pairs of wires. Many of you wonder what these cocoa fiber brushes are used for. This is exactly how we use the brushes when we repot. So this is how the brushes are intended to be used. After repotting, some people put sphagnum moss on it. If you're in a very dry and warm country, putting sphagnum moss on the surface after repotting does help in case it dries out too much. But in the UK, we don't usually have to do that because our climate is not that hot and dry. Okay, now Steve will show you how he ties the tree and you can devise all methods uh, for tying in. It's just to prevent the tree escaping. Cut it off. Okay, just tighten it.
There are all sorts of ways. Sometimes you can crisscross the wire, take it underneath there. Unless you're putting a tree into exhibition, this is not the time to dress it with moss. That is really put, preparing a tree for exhibition. So for repotting, don't worry too much about the moss. Moss will grow on its own simply from watering the tree. So that is your tree done. So this is the repotting process. So we have lots to do. During February and March, we are hoping to repot maybe two to 300, maybe even more trees. So if we have like uh, 20, 40 working days, we will do maybe 200 trees this season. And that is only the big, big trees, the small trees, we do those maybe one every 10 minutes, so we're not counting the small trees. So at Herons, there's a...